Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining today's session. My name is Shashank. I'm a partner sales engineer with Data IQ. I'll be hosting this session today. Um, we'll be those who are not familiar with Data IQ will do a quick overview of the platform. Then we move to talk about how Data IQ and AWS works together. And then switch to a demo, showcase all those integrated integration capabilities. Then we come back to the slides uh, overviewing of RAG architecture, and then we'll go back to the demo and see how we can implement that in Data IQ using Data IQ visual features and Amazon Bedrock hosted LLM models. If we have some time left at the end, uh, we'll take the questions. So feel free to paste your questions on the chat. Uh, and if you're not able to cover that, you can go to our website and request uh, a detailed demo for your team. Okay, so what Data IQ is? Uh, data IQ is an analytics workbench platform that sits on top of organizations' data infrastructure, um, and it provides capabilities and feature to support data science project lifecycle end to end. What I mean by end to end here is starting from connecting to a data source and taking all the way to deploying your projects and models in production within the same platform. It also comes with some central services sitting on top of this, which is having end-to-end -end governance, uh, version management, auditability, and others. Uh, the platform caters to all different personas in the organization. So whether you are a business SME uh, or you are a, a data scientist or data engineer who prefers coding, uh, the platform has the capabilities to support all those. So like SMEs can use, take advantage of all those visual features to do data engineering or machine learning or building GNA application, as well as we have a integration with coding languages like Python or Scala with a notebook interface, as well as coders can choose their own choice of ID to build those pipelines. Uh, software can be installed on uh, your preferred cloud like AWS. It can be also set up on-prem. And we also have a SaaS offering in which Data IQ will uh, manage and provide infrastructure. So, how do Data IQ and AWS work together? So, start with the storages. Uh, data IQ provide inbuilt connector to all AWS different data so uh, data sources like S3, uh, Redshift, RDS, or if you have Databricks or Snowflake sitting on AWS you provide inbuilt connector to that. Uh, as well, when it comes to compute, Databricks or uh, Data IQ has a capability to push uh, compute back to your underlying database, like Databricks, Snowflake, uh, RDS. And if you're using a kind of storage that does not provide compute like S3, or you want to run a type of compute which is not supported by your database, like running uh, machine learning training on Redshift. Uh, now, in that case, Data IQ provides an elastic compute for running such kind of uh, computes using Data IQ, and it is powered by Amazon EKS. So you can run Spark loads, machine learning training, or uh, deep learning training uh, using that elastic compute. So we cover storage, compute. The third level of integration we have is directly with the services offered by AWS, like SageMaker, Bedrock, Comprehend. Uh, Data IQ provides that an abstraction layer on top of all these services where you can build projects communicating with these using the compute and scalability of these services and build application. So overall, uh, together, Data IQ provides a user-friendly interface to build the projects and behind the scene using AWS AI ML power tools to give you that scalability and compute power of AWS. So with that, we'll move to a demo. So what you're seeing right now is a home screen of Data IQ. It's a web-based application. At an instance level, a uh, couple of features I want to highlight. One is Feature Store. Uh, so feature Store is a collection of your features that a feature engineering team can build and expose it here for a um, broader organization to come and scan these data sets and see which one which they can use for their use case. Uh, you can provide name, description, create text to make it easily searchable, 
And this data can be stored anywhere. It can be any data source like Snowflake or Redshift, but a single place where you can push uh, this metadata. You can see all the, line, uh, the, the metadata associated with the data set, uh, where it has been currently used, uh, what initial data sets has been used to build this data set. So like seeing the lineage. And then based on the access uh, rule set up on this, uh, like I can directly use it or you may see an option to request access. Then within the administration, I think the, the first thing that um, when you set up data IQ required is to set up a connection. Uh, so data IQ support multiple types of connection. One is for the storages. You can connect to any database like Snowflake, Databricks, Redshift. Then you can connect to on-prem file systems or cloud storages like S3. And then NoSQL databases or any API based database that you want to connect to. The second category is your model deployment infrastructure. So now you can like, suppose you can connect to SageMaker. Uh, this way you can able to push models that you built in data IQ directly to SageMaker using the same interface. And you also have an option to use your already hosted SageMaker model, connect it in data IQ, and then build uh, like using visual features of data IQ, you can continuously monitor them. Uh, monitor the data drift on that and have a capability to visually score these models. So in this action, there's no uh, model import or export required. Uh, it, it directly connects to the hosted endpoint and build all those features in data IQ. And the third category is the LLM mesh under which you can connect to um, LLM services like Bedrock as well as um, vector databases, cloud-based vector databases like Pinecone. So you can connect to this service. Uh, you can also host a local hugging face model. And if you do not see any model directly available through the connector, you can choose to build your own connection to that and uh, host those model in data IQ. So if you look into AWS Bedrock connection, you can see all these models right now is available. And with every release, we are adding more and more model, like as soon as they get available on Bedrock, we do our internal testing and make it available. For example, right now we do not have an embedding model from Bedrock. But in the coming version, we'll soon have that to also generate embeddings directly from Bedrock. Now, if I go into the project, um, every project in Data IQ has a home screen. Uh, on the right hand side, you can see it fully maintain the revision history, like who's making what changes as a project owner. I can monitor this and start a discussion as needed before committing this to a final branch. Then you have the project name, project description, users contributing to this project, uh, version management you can create multiple branches of this project and then provide tags. And then additional metadata about how many data sets or models has been built within that project or dashboard. Now we go to the flow and this is where we actually design the project. The four big squares that you are seeing are called zone in data IQ. This is just to like if you get a if your workflow become very complex, you can break it down into zone and then at a time just work on one of them. Now in this uh, all the square icons is your data set. Um, and then I can within that is uh, notates the type of data set. It is like this one is S3. And when you click on a data set, it opens up the right hand panel with all the actions that you can take on that. All the circle icons is your recipes. This is where all the data transformation happen. So you use a data set to do web pretty data analysis, identifying what uh, transformation required, and then you apply recipes, which generates an output. So the yellow icons are all your visual recipes. These are uh, no code clickable interface. You can use these recipes um, without writing a code just by putting some configuration. For example, we are using here join recipe, which creates a join. You select the column and then you select the output and run it. Even in the output, you can also see the query generated by data IQ on your behalf. And since this is an S3 data set, you see the compute option is running on Spark. So it will run on your EKS cluster using Spark SQL. Similar to that, uh, we have another recipe in prepare. 
this SAP itself has around um, 109 processors going from filtering data to string methods, mathematical methods, handling uh, geographical data sets, et cetera, which you can use to prepare your data set. And we also have this feature where uh, AI prepare, where you can use natural language to ask to generate preparation steps for that, for you. Now, if you want to use coding recipes, here the orange icons are all coding recipes. You have Python, R, SQL, and the Spark version of it. Again, if the data set is S3, everything will be running on the Elastic Compute. And you can add many, as many clusters as you want to data IQ and choose to push compute to that. And then this pink icons are our uh, LLM powered uh, recipes. We have one for prompt engineering, which we are going to see in the later half. And then uh, NLP recipes powered by LLM models, as well as other two for generating embeddings and fine tuning an existing model. So here, what we are doing is we do the data preparation. You're using code recipes as well as the visual recipes. And then once you have the data set ready to train a model, again, you have this two option. Either you can use our visual ML, which is pre-packaged open source algorithms. Uh, you provide all the configuration. You have full uh, yeah. handling to do customization as you want. And then your other option is you can choose to create your own notebook, uh, Python or R notebook to train your model. And similar to that, uh, this one is an S3 powered. If you have a Redshift, like a database powered, all these recipes, you see an option of in database SQL. So now since Redshift can take the SQL compute and data IQ automatically recommends wherever it can push uh, a logic into a SQL compute, it will provide that. Uh, but that doesn't mean you cannot run Python or Visual ML on it. You can still run it, but instead of using Redshift compute, it automatically uses uh, the EKS uh, compute to run to run that. Coming back to our slides. Now I'll talk about RAG. So our second half of the session, we're going to cover uh, a demo where we showcase how organization can use their internal documentation and create a Gen AI application on top of it using a RAG architecture. Now, what is RAG architecture? In a very simpler way, RAG helps you customize the LLM response by providing context related to the app you are building. So like um, context that LLM model does not have. Now, why we need this is, um, so LLM does not have knowledge of your organization data. They have been trained on public information, and does not actually a database of knowledge. It's more of generating next word using probabilities. So do not know your data also has a limit on input context. So like if you choose to like push all your data to an LLM model, that's not possible. And also not a, it does not mean that it will provide more accuracy. So every LLM model comes with some token limit, like at a time, how many tokens or words in other, in other way to say uh, it can take it. And the third thing is that once you receive the response from LLM, uh, you're not sure what resources it has been used to put up a response. Uh, for one single information, there are multiple responses available in the web. So not sure if it's actually a fact that it has responded. Now to customize LLM response, there are multiple techniques you can do. If you see in the second box, you can use prompt engineering, which is like providing more and more context in every request. Uh, but again, this will not give you the uh, option, like the LLM model is still not aware of the facts or the documents of your internal of your organization. So this prompt in second is RAG. That's where what we do is we break down the documents into smaller chunks so that we can send those chunks to the LLM model as a fact, since we cannot send the whole data. Um, and then third is fine tuning the model, which is a very uh, costlier option as it requires a lot of compute. So there's three different techniques and a combination of them can also work. Now, why we use benefit or what, why won't we use RAG is it will help improve accuracy because now the responses are coming from the facts that you are providing to the, to the model. Being cost-effective as compared to fine-tuning or building LLM model from scratch, 
uh, that will be very uh, expensive at, as it requires a lot of compute and then gives you more developer control. You can choose what facts you want to send to the LLM models and you can even ask a model using prompt to not answer any questions if it's something outside the facts that you are sharing. Now this is the architecture how the uh, the whole rec process works is start with uh, the box the dotted boxes first convert your text uh, into embeddings embeddings is like you first convert into smaller chunks and then store them as a number in a vector store so that's that's where we use some embedding models to do it and store it in a vector store the second step is when a user generate uh, a query uh, it will go first to the vector store, try to identify the closest chunks, which can help answer that question that is coming from the user. And it creates a prompt template, which contains all those facts coming out of from vector store, and then add a question to it. And it will ask LLM mod model to respond to this question using the chunks of uh, context that has come with the prompt. So now in that case, LLM model uses its probability, but it will use the data um, coming from your prompt to respond to that. And also all the metadata that you provide while storing these embeddings in vector store. Like for example, I can say, I can store the document name or maybe the page number or some headings while saving those chunks. So in the response, it can provide all those that this information is actually coming from this document, uh, this page number or this chunk so it, it will really help in validation that the model is responding as per the as per the knowledge exist now we go to the demo again so we have this flow what we have it here we have a editable data set where we have listed out questions that we want uh, the model to respond uh, we have a managed folder where we have uploaded documents. These documents are related to biodiversity organizations. We have from sites, global assessment report from IPBES. And you see there's different format, PDF, talk, HTML. So first thing we are going to use, we are going to use text extraction recipe to convert these documents into a tabular data set. This recipe can help you with multiple things, like not only just converting text, but also like oh, using optical character recognition, probably text from JPEG images or PDF, etc. So once you apply that, um, you can see the data. We have the chunk ID, the document name. Uh, we have break it down at page level. Um, you can choose this configuration whether you want to do it at a page level or not. And this this column and this column will be using as a metadata and then the text uh, in the column for every page. Now we are also doing some pre-processing further and then you can use prepare recipes to do that. We are able to convert it into this data set um, with a ID, which is a document name plus page number and the context. We are going to use ID as a metadata so that it will show up in the sources uh, and then content as a uh, content will be using to store it in a, in a vector database. Now, once I have the data ready, I'm going to use um, the, the embed recipe to generate embeddings. So here I provide the knowledge column, which is a content metadata column. If you can have multiple metadata columns, you can add more. Uh, you just need to have that in the tabular data set. Then we define what should be the chunk size, how many overlap of uh, information is okay. Uh, do you, do, how many records you want to read it from uh, from the data set you can also limit that and then the additional information like uh, first thing what are the llm models we want this vector store to work with so we have chosen two you can see we i have the list of all the llm models through connections from open ai hugging face mosaic ml to bedrock so we have the titan text and then we have gpt 3.5 and at a time how many documents you want to retrieve he mentioned that uh, the other setting is I want to provide an embedding model. Right now we have only Hugging Face and OpenAI ones available. As I mentioned, we will have incoming releases one from Bedrock and other cloud vendors. Then you choose a store type. You want to use ChromaDB, Pinecore, or file-based. Again, this is also a flexible list as we 
have more and more vector stores available in the market, those options will be added in coming releases. And then the code environment, this code environment actually contains all the uh, Python libraries that this model is using like Langchain and other packages that is required to work with this vector store. So we run this recipe and this create a knowledge bank. Now we can use this knowledge bank to work with any of the LLM models. So now to design our prompt, we will go to prompt studios. Here you can create different types of prompt. You can create a prompt template that can run on a data set. So you can convert that as a recipe in the flow, or you can create a single short prompt. If you just want to test an LLM model or compare responses, you can just use this to test it out. And then you may want to use programmatically to work with that uh, LLM model. So you can use single short as well as we have some sample prompts available based on uh, particular use cases. So here I have, um, here I'll be using the AWS bedrock model and I have this created a template. So the following question and then question has been passed as a variable from the questions data set, the editable data set that I showed initially. And I can pass and can see how it is responding. Right now I'm using uh, AWS set and without using my, without using the knowledge bank. So it's just going to directly hit the question to AWS Titan. The one which is available through um, the knowledge bank are comes under that category of retrieval augmented. If you remember, we chose two models. So it is showing both of them, which can work with the knowledge bank. And the second option I have again, I can choose to use the AWS Titan one with the augmented and run the query. And the key differences that you see is that it provides a response. We use one of the second question, the estimated number of vascular plant species. This gives a range. This is giving you an exact information because it's coming from a document. And then it provides all the sources. Now, since we chose four, it shared four, uh, four uh, chunks of data to the LLM model and providing all those information. Now, once I satisfied, I, I can save it as a recipe and then it will become um, a recipe here. In future, if you want to switch to a latest model, or um, you want to switch to a different uh, model altogether, like Anthropic or Clear, Cohere. So you can just change the LLM model without changing the whole process. Um, the decoupling of model with the app makes it easy to generate future versions of the application. And then there's more inputs available for you to further cost customize it. So we cover like how we can create uh, an app using knowledge bank and put it in the flow in the similar fashion. Um, so data IQ also provides you a capability to build uh, web apps. Uh, you have an option to either use existing built visual web apps, which are just configurable web apps prepared for specific use cases, or you can build a code web app where you can use JavaScript or different kinds of like R shiny Python dash or bokeh uh, to create apps. So right now the one we have is a Q&A app um, using our model. Um, and then uh, this will remember the context. So you can make it conversational so that for every session, it will keep the context of your previous questions. Or you can just make a Q&A app, which will every session will close with one response. Say define biodiversity and give me an example. So this is a custom app built using uh, Python dash. You can see the code under the settings tab. And here, if you see, it provides a explanation, example, and the sources, which is very important. Asking for more example, as you see here, it only provided one, which is a specific species diversity of fungi found in a specific region. And here I have leaf lichens, mosses, and like it added more uh, example as I asked. So you can create that app, uh, simplify it. Even if you're creating an app outside of data, you can connect to those LLM model using a token or an authentication key. With that, we completed the session. Uh, 
I will stop recording. If there are any questions, I can take that up.